Hello and welcome to the Let's Program Hangman series. Today we're going to be actually programming our game of Hangman. Now all of the things that you see in today's video are uh, techniques or functions or things that we've covered in either the Let's Program Hangman series or the Python tutorial series. So none of this should be new information, but we're going to take it all together, uh, put it all together, and create a fully functioning game of Hangman. Now, I am going to do this a little bit differently than I normally do when I record a video. Normally when I sit down, I have a uh, list of notes next to me and I have an outline and an idea of what I want to cover and in what order. Uh, today we're not going to do that. Today I'm just going to fire up a new programming window and develop the game, kind of show you my thought process as I develop the game. Now I've written Hangman a number of times, but I don't have any outline sitting next to me, so as new features and thoughts pop into my head, we'll be adding them to the program. Now that does mean you're probably going to see a few bugs, you're going to see a few things that are miskeyed, and some of the program that's simply not going to work, and we'll fix it as we go and we'll debug it just as uh, I normally would if I wasn't recording a video. So let's go ahead and head into the programming environment and let's program Hangman. Okay, so here we are in our Python shell and with our programming window up. And as I think about what I'm going to do in Hangman, I know the first thing that I'm going to need to do uh, is give myself the ability to create a random word. So I'm going to import random. And the other thing that I'm going to have to do in order to kind of test this program, or at least get it working at the very basic level, is have a short word list. Now, this won't be the complete word list, but uh, to get us started, I'm going to add, say, five words. So let's do airplane, vehicle, television, speaker, and computer. And I want these all to be uppercase. In fact, this whole program is going to operate in uppercase. So I'm going to use the .upper method to make these all uppercase. And then I'm going to use dot .split in order to make this a list variable with five elements. Once that word list is created and turned into a list, I want to shuffle that list. So I'm going to do random.shuffle. And I want to shuffle the word list. And that's, this just ensures that the first time I run the program, I'm going to have a random word list that I can draw from. When I think of variables that this program is going to need, I can think of three off the top of my head that will get us started. Uh, the first thing we're going to need is an actual secret word. So I'm going to create a variable secret word, and I'm going to pop off of the word list. Now this will give us a random uppercase word because we've shuffled this list in the third line of our program. The other thing that I know I'm going to need is a list of all the letters that my user has gotten correct and a list of all the letters that my user has gotten incorrect. This will become really important. This uh, correct list will be important when we're trying to determine whether or not the user has won the game. And this incorrect list is going to be important for us to have control over when the game ends. We're going to be checking the length of that incorrect list. And if that incorrect list gets too long, probably in the vicinity of five or six letters, the game's going to be over. So that will allow us to control how many guesses our user gets before they've lost the game. So we're going to add some functions, but before I do that, I'm just going to add a while true loop to my game. This will be my main game loop. It doesn't have anything in it yet, but we do want to add a function. And I think the first function that I'm going to want to add is a function that can draw the board. This will include our hangman gallows when we get around to that, and also the word with the correct blanks. So let's go ahead and create a new function, and we're going to call this draw board. And this function will draw the gallows eventually, as well as display the word. And let's see, what do we want to do with this? I guess for right now, we simply want to do a for loop and say for i in secret word. I'm going to say if i is in the list of correct words we've received, or uh, correct letters we've received, then I'm going to print out that letter with an end equals, and I'm going to have the word spaced out, kind of like we did in the other videos in this uh, playlist. And if the letter we're iterating over is not in the correct letter list, then I'm going to print an underscore 
with that same end equals. And after that's done, after our for loop is over, I want to add just a couple of uh, line breaks. So I'm going to do uh, a print statement with two new line escape sequences. Now the other thing that I want my board to do when it's drawn is let my user know what they've missed. And so I'm going to create a list of missed letters. And to do that I'm going to print missed letters. And here um, I don't need a print statement. What I need is I need to iterate over the list of incorrect letters. Now of course that's going to be blank right now, but this will set us up for uh, when we actually do have letters incorrect and incorrect. So I'm going to say for i in incorrect. We're going to iterate over each of those letters, and I'm going to print i for my user, and end equals with two spaces. And then since I used like, these uh, stars here, I'm going to print uh, a new line escape sequence. That will kind of cancel out this end equals when our for loop is over. And a bunch of stars. So let's go ahead and uh, see. Like that, I, that should be it for the draw board function for now. And so I think what we need to do now is test this function. So in my main game loop, I'm going to call draw board. And I'm going to put a blank input statement here so that my program will pause. And I can take a look at what's going on. So let's hit F5 to run this program. And uh, it looks like it's doing what I want. I have a word up here that has a uh, bunch of blank letters. And I have a list of all the missed letters in theory. So this is kind of a good draw board uh, function here. Of course, if I'm playing a game of Hangman, the next thing that would have to happen is my user would have to uh, enter a guess. As you can see, when I run this program, um, I hopefully am getting a different word every time. And in fact, before we move on, let's go ahead and make sure that we are getting a different word every time. So I'm going to add a just bit of debugging code in here and have it print the uh, secret word. Now, when my uh, when my main program is done, once I'm done with everything, I'll just comment this print line out. But this will allow me to just to quickly test the random word generator and make sure that's doing what it's supposed to. So we got television, computer, and we do in fact have a working uh, random word generator. So, so that's good. Uh, so back to where we were going now, what I want the user to do is to be able to guess a single letter and then redraw the board replacing the blanks with the letter that the user has guessed. So let's go ahead and create a new user defined function here, and I'm going to call this uh, user guess. And this function will really need to do two things. This will uh, allow the user to take a guess, and then it will append that letter to correct or incorrect. And so I really need this. This is like a double duty function right here. Um, not only do I need the prompt the user to take a guess, but then I'm going to need this function to also throw it into correct or incorrect depending on whether or not the user has guessed the, a right letter. I'm also going to have a bit of uh, not debugging code, what, what am I, the word I'm looking for here. Um, I'm going to make sure that the user is entering a single letter and in order to do that I'm going to start by putting this in a while true loop. And I'll only break this while true loop if the, when the user has entered something correct. And you'll see what I mean. If that didn't make sense, um, you'll see what I mean once we get going. So I'm going to have the user enter a guess. So I'm going to have the user input uh, guess a letter. And we'll use an escape sequence there so that they'll enter on the next line. And I do want this to be uppercase. Uh, that way I know all the words that I've selected are uppercase and this also means that the user will have to enter an uppercase letter. And now I'm going to do a series of checks. I need to make sure that the user um, has not already guessed the letter that they've just entered. So I'm going to say if the guess is incorrect or 
the guess is in incorrect, meaning they've already selected that letter before. I'm going to print. You have already guessed that letter. Guess again. Uh, another thing that might happen is they might enter a number. So I'll say if their guess is numeric, and we'll use the is numeric method. We'll print out the message. Please enter only letters, not numbers, and prompt them to guess again. And each time, um, each time one of these message prints, uh, we're still in this while true loop. So if we get to the end, it will prompt the user to enter a guess again. If the user does it correctly, we'll just go ahead and break this this loop here. Um, so let's see, another case that the user might enter is uh, they might enter more than one letter. So I'll say if the length of their guess is greater than one, then we'll print, please enter only one letter at a time, guess again. And I guess the fourth case that is pretty common is that the user just hits enter and they haven't entered any letters at all. So we'll say if the length of guess is equal to zero, print, please enter your selection. If none of those have executed, that means the user has entered a single letter as their guess, then I'm going to break this while true loop. With that done, I can now check to see if that single letter is has is in the secret word. So let's go ahead and say if the guess is in secret word, then we're going to append guess to the correct letters list. And if it's not, we're going to append it to the incorrect letters list. So we'll append guess to incorrect letters. And for now, that should do user guess just fine. I mean, I think that's uh, that's everything we wanted to do for right now in this kind of first iteration of the program. And so now let's go down to our game loop and have the user take a guess. And since we have this input statement as a natural part of user guess, I can get rid of this input statement in my main game loop. Now we should draw the board and then prompt the user to take a guess. Let's run this program and see how it works. Okay, so I know my word is television, so I'm going to guess the letter X. And I can see that they're all still blank, so that's awesome. And the letter X has shown up in my missed letter list. And let's go ahead and select a P or something else that would not be in television. Awesome, so XP is now in my missed letters list. The length of missed letters is two, but I still haven't gotten any uh, letters correct because nothing's been drawn in the blanks. And so let's go ahead and guess the letter E. If this works correctly, we should get the E's in our letter, which we did. And it was not added to our missed letters list because it's only appending to one list or the other. Now, theoretically here, I could go through and play this game of Hangman. So, television. And we'll use a, a Y. No. So in its most basic form right now, we do have a working game of Hangman. We don't have any gallows. The user can guess forever. So they can guess any number of letters that they want. The game will never end. Um, we can go ahead and test some of our cases that we used in user guessed. Uh, you can see up here that when we guessed a letter we've already guessed before, like N, it's telling us we've already guessed that letter. If I enter a seven, it tells me to enter only letters, not numbers. If I used PJ, it tells me to enter only one letter at a time. And if I enter nothing, it's telling me to enter my selection. So these error checks are working okay. We're getting our lists appended correctly. We have a basic game of Hangman right here, so let's, let's turn it into a game now that we have the shell working. Let's go ahead and break this. So break. And that right there seems to be a good stopping point for the 
first part of Let's Program Hangman. We have a working shell. We are able to enter a guess. We still don't have a game of Hangman, so we're going to have to add some gallows and some game elements to this. And, you know, we might end up getting a little bit fancier and having some scores and some other variables that we can do some cool stuff with. But for now, we're going to go ahead and break this video. I'll see you back in the uh, next video as we continue to program our Hangman game. Thank you so much for watching the Let's Program Hangman series, and have a great day.